There we go. Okay. Got it. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. Thank you all so much for being on time. I deeply appreciate you all investing the next hour of your life here with me as we talk and learn about how we can educate our children with freedom and um, do things a little bit different than the way that they do in public school. Um, I would love to introduce you all to one of my very, very dear friends, Sarah Jane. So Sarah Jane, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and kind of share, share my spiel. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, as Angela said, uh, we are dear fr friends. We actually met on TikTok through my aunt. She saw one of her videos and said, oh my gosh, you two have to meet each other. Uh, you'll totally click and get along. And we hit it off right away and have stayed buddies since and support each other in everything that God's doing in our lives. And it's just amazing to have each other across the country and still um, have that support and accountability. But uh, I am here because Angela thought it would be good for me to share what I'm doing as a resource for you all through your unschooling, especially for your middle and high school students. Um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit about my background later, but I own something called the skilled learning platform, which is a proprietary app where your students, your teenagers can go on on the screens they're already on that you're trying to get them off of, right. And do something productive. So they'll watch YouTube style videos where I teach all sorts of life skills, specifically things like communication, um, how to learn right? How to fall in love with the process of learning and how to fail gracefully. And some of the things that we know that they're not learning in traditional education, but is also sometimes not thought of when it comes to our homeschool and our unschool educations as well. So we kind of bridge that gap and we want to make it, I want to make it as cost-effective for every family as possible. So it's, like $9 a month um, to get access to about a year's worth of curriculum on there. Mm -hmm. And then I also have been bringing on about 25 innovative instructors. Angela is one as well. Mm -hmm. um, and my innovative instructors are going to be creating courses that your students can choose to take that will either um, be like mini apprenticeships for careers that they maybe didn't know existed or they wanted to try out before you go invest all your money in going to college or trade school. And they get to learn from people who are actually doing these things as a career. And it's stuff like music and art and um, philanthropy and missions and all sorts of things that aren't the traditional five, right? Cop, firefighter, nurse, um, doctor, lawyer, accountant, right? So instead, um, we're giving that opportunity for them to see what the lifestyle's like, not just the job and the title that goes with it, but how does a, a job like this affect having a family and affect how many vacations you can take and stuff like that as well. And it's all very much um, to support you as you guide your teen and tween home education learners to take ownership of their own education and love the process enough that you don't have to be on top of them the way that you would if you were a teacher in a traditional classroom. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Sarah Jane. And actually, I wanted to ask you too, um, you were a public school teacher before, right? I was. I was. And much like you, um, I actually, so I didn't, I only went to public school myself until eighth grade. And then I started attending private school and I went to private university as well. So I didn't really have a good uh, background example of like what was going on in, in traditional education um, from my own experience. So when I stepped into teaching high school, I was actually teaching 12th grade English. And within two weeks of being in the classroom, I started telling my students, I am worried, like you are not prepared for the adult world. It's going to, it's going to hit you hard because you're not learning the things that you need to build your own confidence to even be resourceful. One of the first things I, I always teach is resourcefulness. Like if I don't have the answer, where do I find the answer? Right. And they didn't even know how to do that. So, um, and, and we're talking about 17, 18 year olds who are getting ready to go out into the adult world and fend for themselves in many cases. 
within two months of being in the classroom, I told my students, when I step out of the classroom and God calls me away from here, I am going to revolutionize the way we we do education. And I did just that. Um, I actually only taught in the classroom in 2019 through 2021, um, the two big years of COVID lockdown. So I started before that all happened, finished that year um, in lockdown. And then the entire next year, we were still... Um, you know, doing home learning and all of that stuff. That idea of resourcefulness, that was definitely something that I saw as well too. Um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Angela and I also used to be a public school teacher and now I advocate for unschooling and self-directed education. And that whole idea of resourcefulness and cultivating that, that is one of the major issues that I saw with students that were in school because they were operating under this forced compulsory education model, they were yeah. constantly relying on me or the other adults that were in the building to tell them what to do. Like we had to tell them step-by-step, step, this is what you need to learn. This is how you need to learn it. This is the question you should be asking. This is the answer you should be finding. Um, it was it was not at all preparing our children for real life and the real world. And so that is why when I first discovered unschooling, it just it just made sense. Like we cannot prepare our children for the real world while trying to control and limit everything that they do and have them reliant on us for everything um, that they're trying to do in their life. And we really do want them to be self-directed learners. We want them Absolutely. to cultivate that internal motivation that's going to make them lifelong learners. And yeah, so that's why, that's why both of us are here. And, um, and Sarah Jane's program is, is incredible. Um, I know there are a lot of people that kind of popped in late. So for those of you that are joining us, if you could just type in the chat and let me know where you're from. So what state you're from, and then let me know where you are in your unschooling journey. You could just say, I've started, I haven't started yet, um, or however long that, that you've been doing unschooling or homeschooling, feel free to just type that in the chat and let me know. Um, Heather, you asked, is there a video? What do you mean? You should be able to see both of us, but not everyone else. Yeah, no one else wanted to show their face. <laughs> That's okay, though. I'm I'm a public school teacher. I'm used to seeing the all the black screens from COVID. <laughs> right. Oh, this is so cool. Lots of people from Maryland, my hometown. Yay. Glad to see you guys here. Awesome. I see someone from Texas just starting with unschooling. Awesome. Heather, give your screen a swipe. You're probably just looking at the wrong, um, the wrong setup. So you should, you're only seeing yourself. Um, if you're on your computer, you want to move the screen to the left. If you're on your phone, you'll swipe it this way as well. And it'll show you uh, a different screen, a different version of the screen. California. Hey, any Florida people here? Where are my people at? There should be. We normally have a lot of like Californians and Flor Floridians um, that are on the calls. That's because our school systems are so terrible. <laughs> yeah, everywhere, I feel like. Um, awesome. So Sarah Jane, should we open it up for questions or? Should we? I, I don't know, because this is my first one of these. Um, should we? Would you guys like to hear like what unschooling is and how it's different than maybe uh, the more common home education and stuff like that, especially like so for me, um, teens and tweens, especially like it's very easy at the kindergarten level to do unschooling and just sort of let them play and explore and they learn their numbers and they learn, learn their letters organically. But how do we develop skills in someone who maybe has been in public school or private school and now is transitioning to unschooling? Okay. We're getting a lot of yeses. Is that okay? Angela, yeah. do you mind? No, go okay. for it. So, um, so specifically for these older ages, I typically say 11 to about 19, right? And that means that they may not be in sixth grade, but they're at that level where they're becoming more independent. They're starting to look for things um, to take more re responsibility and be more accountable for even though they're not doing them. So let's be real. We're talking about teenagers and tweens here. I know that they're not necessarily doing the things that they want to do as far as the dishes 
and um, you know, all of that stuff, but they're asking for pets. They're asking for privacy. They're asking to have a phone or go places with their friends without you or, um, or to walk home from church or whatever it is. They're asking for more freedom. Right. And so when we get to that point, especially with our, our high schoolers, I like to say that teenagers are adults in training. And your job as parents isn't to make them learn something specific so that they can go and do that one thing. Your job is to cultivate an opportunity where they can practice all of the skills they're going to need as adults while they're still safe and ho at home with you to have you not solve their problems or rescue the them from those problems, but instead to be the person that they come to when they've made a mess and you say, Hey, I'm going to help you clean this up. I'm going to help you navigate this drama with your friends. I'm going to help you navigate the spill on the floor. I'm going to help you navigate not passing your driver's test. Right. And instead of giving them a set of that do this, don't do this. We give them a little bit more freedom by giving them choices and giving them the opportunity to learn how to make choices, knowing that there's always a consequence, right? A good consequence or a bad consequence. And sometimes just like a neutral consequence where you don't really get anything out of it. It doesn't hurt. It's not good or bad. But this idea that you start out in middle school training them to be teenagers. And in as their teenage years, you're training them to be adults. So instead of the idea that if you, let's say your, your teenager, um, typically doesn't do, do their homework, right. Um, they, you really struggled when they were in traditional school, they hate doing their homework. They constantly fail tests, but you know, that they're bright giving them choices about what they're studying. And that's where unschooling really works so well um, for teenagers because you're giving them the choice to, hey, am I more in the mood to do math right now or science right now? Or to study something that I'm actually interested in. And this is a big part of what we do is interest led, led projects where if they're super into football or they're super into Bible study or they're super into TikTok, right? We encourage them go do projects on the things that you're actually interested in. And we're going to add in math, science, history, reading, writing. We're going to add all of those in organically instead of you sitting down and being like, I have to do algebra now. No, we're like, okay, if you need this, 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 and this to get the algorithm to do this, this, and this, how's the math work, right? And they want to do it because they're interested in it. Their self-led learning is really what unschooling is all about, is about working within what they're already excited to do and encouraging them to do the hard things and to do it with excellence and to fail with grace instead of you have to do it now. And if you don't do it, I'm taking your phone instead. Hey, I, it looks like you really want to be on screens right now. What can you do on your phone that will help you complete this project? Right. And just finding new ways, mindset shifts, to parent a little bit differently than the parents of traditional kid, traditional education kids. I love that. Thank you for sharing that, Sarah Jane. Um, I think the whole idea of like shifting how we're parenting, I say that a lot when I talk about unschooling is like, people are like, well, what is unschooling? Truthfully, unschooling is just parenting. It is, it is being a parent and being the kind of parent that God has called us to be, right? A parent who is loving and patient and connected and self-controlled and all of these other things that we, we want to be as human beings. And it's just being that with your kids and supporting them and loving them and giving them opportunities to explore the things that they love and the resources that they need and helping them get connected and figure out what their passions are and then giving them the space and the freedom to pursue those passions. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions about what either of us have said so far or anything that you are curious about? And you can like unmute yourself and talk. There aren't a lot of us here. So you can unmute yourself or if you want, you can just type your comments or your questions in the chat. Um, that's another great way too, because that way I can make sure I, that we answer everyone's questions. Okay, somebody go first. We got to break the ice. Once one person <laughs> asks a question, then everybody jumps in. So who's going to be brave for us? <laughs> Oh, 
also sneak hint. If you hit your space bar, you unmute yourself and then you can just hit your space bar again to mute yourself again. So if you want to jump in and ask a question, that's a really easy way to do it. Um, all right. So Macy wrote in the comments, I'm rocking my daughter to sleep or I talk. I totally get that. Uh, this may be off topic, but how is unschooling allowed? Do you want to take, take it if you want? Yeah, I will. Oh, okay. So, um, so good question. Um, and the, how is it allowed really is less important than the fact that it's allowed in every single state. So try and understand that traditional education has only been around for less than 150 years. What we know as compulsory education has only existed since our great grandparents. And for thousands of years before that, everyone unschooled, everyone unschooled. So um, so for us, society has made us believe that the way that traditional education, I always call it traditional education, whether it's public or private or charter schools, the, the idea of Monday through Friday, hours a day, sitting still in a classroom, being taught alongside everyone, the same thing to every student, completely ignoring their natural gifts from God, the talents that they've been given, their interests, the skills that they already have, the skills they need to learn, and having that individual mindset. That traditional education system is an experiment. And what we're seeing, especially since lockdown, is that it's not working. So the 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 good answer to your question is, thank God it is allowed because it works so much better. I believe, and I have ADHD and I've been unmedicated my entire life. Um, I was I didn't do well with the medication. So I had to learn a different way. And I believe that ADHD is more in line with the way that God wants us to learn, to go over here and learn. And while we're still excited, move to something else and not sit in it so long that we hate it. And then we don't want to go back to it. Right. Um, doing a lot of different things and staying, you know, active and excited and not every day is going to be easy and not every day is going to be perfect. But, um, yes, I, I hear you. She's saying that she's, she's not against it. She's just shocked. The, the cool thing is Think about it this way. Unschooling is just the easiest way to do what's best for your specific student. And unschooling allows you to meet their educational milestones in a way that is different from their siblings, knowing that their siblings are so different. They have different learning styles and different times that they thrive and different certain times of the month or the year that they thrive because of other things they're involved in and hormones and all that stuff. And all you're doing is you're saying, hey, what are we learning? This is awesome. Let me keep track of this. And so you're just creating the curriculum for your individual student instead of expecting someone else to make up a curriculum and then using that for a student that it doesn't fit. So it's not that far off from what you've normally seen. It's just a lot less formally structured. Yeah. I hope um, I answered your question. In Yes, I think you did a great job answering that. In regards to like the criteria for the state specifically, as far as how is that as legal, um, unschooling is a type of homeschooling. So technically unschooling falls under that homeschooling umbrella. And actually, let me share this with you guys. Hold on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen real quick. Here we go. Okay. Um, so if you have not visited the HSLDA website, I highly recommend that you do. So this is the HSLDA website. And then here you can click on your state or you can click here and then find it there. They have this nice little key here. So the states that are green means that they do not require any notice. And what that means is that in those states, homeschooling is actually the default. So if you live in any of these states where it's green, you are automatically a homeschooler and you have to opt in to the public school system. There's, you don't have to notify anybody. You don't have to tell anybody. Everyone is automatically considered a homeschooler until you actually register your child in school. Um, in the states that are the light blue, they are the low regulation. And I am so thankful, <laughs> Maryland, where I live, we're a light blue state kind of smothered next to all of these other states that are crazy. Um, it's HSLDA. Actually, I shared the link in the chat. 
um, hslda.org slash legal. And they also have this in Spanish. I know I have some Spanish people that are some Spanish speaking people that are sometimes on, um, on these. So they do have this in Spanish. You can just change the language up at the top. So for example, you would click on this for whatever your state is. So in Maryland, I know we got a lot of Marylanders here. Um, in Maryland, they have four different options for homeschooling, which is really cool. So when you click on it, and then it goes into further depth about each of the options. So the options here are that you can homeschool under a portfolio, and that would be when you are supervised by the county. Um, the second one is you can homeschool under a church umbrella option. And then, um, and that was, so that would be peaceful world schoolers. Actually, let me backtrack a little bit. So the, with the portfolio option, if you homeschool through the county in Maryland, they do require you to keep a portfolio. So you have to keep records of all the work that you've done. And then you meet with someone from the county. And actually this was how I got introduced to homeschooling was because I knew a homeschooling family. They were native Spanish speakers. So the parents didn't speak English, but they wanted to homeschool their daughter. And uh, so the daughter did her work online and their annual reviewer or their evaluator, evaluator thought that they had not proven that they had done enough. And so they were actually planning to not only remove the parents' right to homeschool their children and make them go back to school, but they were also planning to remove the child from the home because they were going to charge them with neglect. And that entire experience mm. watching them go through that was it was so traumatic for the parents and it was so traumatic for the child. And then watching them, like me watching as an outsider, it was traumatic for me watching them go through that. It was terrible. And so I had to actually come in and work with them as a certified teacher and, and help them through that whole mess. And walking through that, I was like, I never want any family to go through this ever again. I am going to create an umbrella one day so that no one has to deal with this mess. So if you are in Maryland, please do not go through the county. Um, in my opinion, it's just not worth the risk. So the second option is you can do a homeschool umbrella, which is the Peaceful World Schoolers umbrella. And then the third option is you can go through a church exempt school um, umbrella. And so that's the what PAX Academy is. So PAX Academy is a church exempt school, a private school. So yeah, so those are the different ones. Um, and then, like I said, you can look for the ones that are in your state. And just so that you all know, um, HSLDA is going to be referenced probably by every homeschool organization and co-op that you speak to around the country, no matter where you are. We all use it as sort of, um, I hate to use this reference, but like our homeschooling Bible, right? It's the legal side. They do, there are a ton of lawyers who are in every single state that put all this together that say, this is what the laws are for this state. And this is what you can do and not do about it. So all you have to do is go to HSLDA, which is Homeschool Legal defense. Authority. Legal uh, yeah, Legal Defense. Um, and then on that page, it'll give you a map. I know Heather said she's not seeing anything, um, but just go to the main part of the website and then you can dig in state by state. The one, uh, the page that Angela was on is slash legal, um, but there are other ways to access it. Just go on there and play with it. And just, there's so many resources, so many resources on this website. Um, so just know that's, that's gonna be your, go to for, is, can I do this or can I not do this? Is this frowned upon or is this totally good? Right. So. Yes. And every state's laws are different. So the way that you would do unschooling in each of the states is going to look different. And I know in Florida, and this is one of the ways that I got involved with home education too, is um, that when you do a portfolio review and you're not under an umbrella school. So you're just parents who have decided you want to home educate your kids. You're maybe buying someone else's curriculum like Charlotte Mason or somebody else's. They're not attending a co-op or anything else that would act as the keeper of the records. Um, you keep all their work and then you have to actually have a state licensed certified teacher say, if they met their milestones, which I think takes us to an, the next question, which was Amber said, how do we make sure our kids are meeting their educational milestones? Angela, you want to take that one? I would love to take that one. Um, one of the beautiful things about unschooling that I tell parents all the time is that we truly do live as though school does not exist. Like 
we, we just do. Um, it is a completely perspective, completely different perspective when it comes to life and learning. So there aren't milestones in that sense. Um, when we think about the purpose of a curriculum, like someone made up, and actually this is one of the first questions that I had when I started unschooling, like who decided that a kid has to learn the water cycle when they're five and the rock cycle when they're eight? Like mm -hmm. who made that up? I have no idea who made that up. Um, I have no idea who made that up, but somebody made that up. Somebody sat down and decided probably a bunch of dudes in a boardroom somewhere sat and decided this is what we're going to say that this kid has to learn this by this date at this time, at this age, in this way, at, you know, all of these kinds of things. And when we choose to unschool or to home educate, we remove all of that stuff. So there aren't milestones in that sense of like your kid has to know how to count to a hundred by the time they're five, like all of that is gone. So we often will hear, you'll often hear people say the child is the curriculum. So you're looking at your unique child and saying, what does my child know? What do they enjoy? And then they continue learning on their own unique learning path. So it isn't like they have to meet these certain benchmarks at a certain age or at a certain time. Every human being is unique. And at the end of the day, you know, all of you are here. I have no idea how old you were when you learned how to read. I have no idea how old you were when you learned how to figure out, you know, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Like I, I haven't even used that in my actual life anytime recently. So all of these kind of benchmarks or milestones that they have in school, they just aren't relevant in the real life, in the real world. It, it really is just, what does my child need today? And what does my child want to do in the future? And then what are the steps to get them from today to where they want to be in the future? Yeah. And so Amber had a, a follow-up question. So there are no requirements and Heather jumped in and said, so I, can I take my kid out of public school right now? And what are the right steps? He's 14 and he learns hands-on, which for me is great. Those are my kids, right? That's right in my age group. Yes. You absolutely can pull your kids out of school right now, depending on your state, which you'll find in HSLDA, there are some requirements. Um, those, those, blue and red states do have requirements. I know the Florida and Maryland are uh, light blue states. And here you have to um, send a letter to the school board saying, hey, thanks, but no thanks. I'm going to, I'm going to keep my kid at home. I'm going to home educate. And then from that point, you do either have to be under an umbrella school or do a, um, a portfolio review each year. But she's in not, go ahead. No, I was just sorry for interrupting. She's in Iowa, right? I, I believe you're in Iowa. So Iowa is a green state, which means that you have no notice or low regulation. And so I, I know that you can't see this, so I'm going to try to read it out loud for you. Um, so in Iowa, it says that you have five different options. You can homeschool by a private and independent private instruction. You can do homeschooling by opting out, homeschooling with an annual assessment, homeschooling with a supervising teacher, or homeschooling with a homeschool assistance program. Um, my guess is most people would probably do the opt out, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I encourage you to like go through this website and then read through the different options more in detail and then figure out which option is going to be best for you. Um, you can do any of these options. And then also, like I mentioned, I also have PAX Academy, which is a registered and accredited private school. So you can enroll in private in PAX Academy. Your child will be able to get their high school diploma and their transcripts and everything through us, yes. but you have the freedom to unschool. And let's keep in mind when we're talking about these um, benchmarks, right? Like Angela said, somebody made those up and you as a parent are already seeing what your kids are thriving at, what they're barely surviving and what they're still learning through. And so for us at the skilled learning platform, we, instead of doing grades, because we're an unschooling model, but a curriculum. So there's something to do on a regular basis that you can actually track and, you know, Hey, we're actually going to do something. We're not just going to play video games all day and say, I'm going to be a professional video gamer, but I can't write a text message without a, you know, and use, uh, periods or capitalization or any of that kind of stuff. Like we know that they need things like math, things like um, grammar and spelling and writing to be able to be employable in the, in the rest of the real world. But we come at it from a different perspective. So instead of saying, hey, it's time for math class, 
we encourage them to do projects. And in those projects, they may have to build something, which means they're going to be doing math or they're going to have to cook something, which means they're going to be doing math, but they don't, it's not sit still and do a worksheet and be like, yay, I got it. And then bomb a test because they just memorized it. They're actually experiencing the learning in a real way that's going to deepen their understanding of not only how to use it in that specific situation, but also how to apply that knowledge to a new situation, um, which is something a lot of adults can't do. They, they really struggle with that, taking it from the information and like facts and figures category into actual application. Whereas unschoolers are encouraged to try it out, play with it. Um, if your kids are into engineering or theater or whatever, they're going to play with it. They're going to fail, but they're not going to feel like failures because it's not a test. They're just playing. And then they find new, better, more efficient ways to do it. And you're going to see these things and you're going to keep track of them. And that's how you're going to do your transcripts. And that's how you're going to keep track of if they're showing growth, because you're going to see, hey, when Billy made I always use enchiladas because that's one of the first things I teach the kids. When Billy made enchiladas the first time, he really struggled with the directions. He felt overwhelmed. He um, he forgot to turn on the oven. But the second time he made them, he remembered to turn on the oven and he felt less overwhelmed. He still needed my help. But look at this growth, right? We're not looking for an A every single time. We're looking for what are they doing better than they were last time? And what are some things they can still improve on? And then you're going to keep track of that stuff. You're going to say, hey, I watched my kid learn how to change a tire. I watched my kid learn how to communicate effectively. I watched my kid get sick and know how to manage their own body and rest, which again, most adults don't know how to do. <laughs> um, I see... Uh, Amber wrote, my daughter is nine and in fourth grade, I'm dreading middle school. It's already too much stress for her. I feel you. Um, it's actually one of the biggest reasons why I advocate for unschooling, because I can't tell you how many families I've spoken to within the first two weeks of unschooling. They're like, oh my gosh, my kid is back. Um, my kid is relaxed. They're happy. There's no more depression. There's no more anxiety. There's no more ADHD. All the behavior problems that they were experiencing in school, literally all of them just disappear within weeks. And it, it truly is incredible to see when we give our children the freedom and the space to just be and to pursue the things that they love every day. It's it's incredible what that does to them as far as like their emotional health and, and well-being. Um, so yes, I hear you on that. And I see also unique said we have filed the Maryland homeschool notification form and have gotten it signed off by our County secretary. How long is it recommended for the unschooling phase? Okay. And then I saw you put, sorry, de-schooling. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah Jane. <laughs> for You want to answer that one? Sure. Um, so Actually, typically can you, can you explain the difference between de-schooling and unschooling? Too? Yes. Some people Great can question. So, um, so unschooling is basically school without a formal, formal curriculum, whereas de-schooling is breaking those ideas and habits of what school should look like. And that is a period of time that every single family should and deserves to go through when you're transitioning from traditional education of any form into unschooling or home education, because it's going to drastically affect how you and your kids show up when it's time to learn something. If they're still expected to have the same posture of be quiet, don't think out loud, don't express yourself, hold it in or, 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 um, you know, raise your hand and wait till I'm done. Like, yes, we're going to keep them from interrupting. We're going to teach them manners, but we want them to have a conversation about the learning, not just here's one right answer. And if you don't get the right answer, you're wrong. We want to think through these things and build that process. So de-schooling is that amount of time, which typically is about one month for every year that your kid was in school. So assuming they started traditional school in kindergarten, and now they're in third grade, you would take four months to do de-schooling. And that's really where you just play together and you just enjoy each other and you don't put anything formal on, Hey, we're learning right now. Everything, just because everything is a learning opportunity doesn't mean that it should be. 
right? So we're, we're taking that time to break down those mindsets and to release a lot of that stress. So like you said, your daughter is getting ready to go into middle school and she's already stressed out. Think about a student who's in eighth grade and they've spent all of those years in school and now they have to figure out how to transition and let that stress off. It's going to take a period of time for those bad, that bad juju to flush out, right? And then I just want to make one more point about de-schooling that a lot of people miss. And that's, we are not just de-schooling our kids. You must de-school as well which means that you have to break your ideas of what school should look like, things like benchmarks and specify specific topics um, like math, science, history, and English. Um, the idea that failure is means that you are a failure. Um, grades over growth, right? So there's a whole lot of that decompression. And if you, like me, started school in kindergarten and went to school all the way through university and spent six years in university, it may take you or your spouse over a year to fully de-school and shift your mindset. So what I typically, and I would love your input on this, Angela, but what I typically recommend is de-school your kid for however many months is appropriate for their um, the amount of years they were in school. And then encourage your student at any age, whether they're five or 15, to see the signs of what old school looked like and call you out on it. Teach them an appropriate way to say, hey, mom, that doesn't feel like how we school anymore. And give you an, a chance to reset yourself over the, uh, the period of a year or a year and a half, knowing that you got to have a lot of grace during that period. Yeah, I think that's great. And I, I just wanted to share too, I, I put in the chat um, recently, actually within, it was like a week ago, um, I published a book called The De-Schooling Diary, A 365-Day Journey into Living and Learning Without School. And that is truly the book that I wish that I would have had when I started this journey five years ago. It is really a, a way to kind of facilitate that de-schooling process. And again, it gives you a full year of, of that opportunity to answer questions that are specifically going to force you to think deeply about a lot of these ingrained beliefs, um, thinking deeply about your personal experience with school, your fears around maybe your child's education or your child's future, um, addressing kind of the day-to-day, -day, looking for the learning that your kids are naturally doing without being forced or coerced to do it. So all of those kinds of questions are going to be in that book for you, like I said, to just kind of facilitate that de-schooling process and hopefully um, it will not take you so long as it took me to kind of wrestle through a lot of those um, those tough issues, you know, when you're making this transition. And um, yeah, so I just put that in the chat for you. It is an excellent, excellent resource. And um, I would love for you guys to check it out and hopefully share it with people that you think would benefit from it too. And that's one of the programs you're actually going to have on the app, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm so excited. I can't wait to have her on our platform. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> um, so Unique asked, if we're de-schooling for three to four months and getting reviewed by the state, would I use those activities like field trips, et cetera, to provide proof that they're learning something in those first few months? Um, so Unique, I know that you said that you're in Maryland. Um, if you choose to remain under the supervision of the county and do your review with the county, you totally can. Um, you can use pictures and things like that as a part of your portfolio review. But as I said, I highly, highly, highly encourage especially after all the horror stories that I've heard of being under the county, I highly encourage you to enroll in the Peaceful World Schoolers umbrella if your child is in grades K through eight, um, or if they're in high school to register them in PAX Academy. Um, when you're registered in the umbrella, you do not have to have any portfolio. We do not require any portfolio. We do not require anything. The only thing in the umbrella that you are legally required to do is to have an annual review with me. And it is a conversation just like this, where we talk about the stuff that's great and you talk about the stuff that's not working and we brainstorm ideas together and celebrate all the awesome things that you guys have done and learned over the last year and that's it uh, my job is to make sure that your homeschooling and unschooling experience is as stress-free and fun and enjoyable as possible um so yes you are 
uh, you said, how do you change your status if you've already filed to be reviewed by the state? So you are welcome to change your status at any point in time. The way that you would do that is you have to fill out the same form again, and then just let them know that you're registered in our either our umbrella or in our private school. Um, with the private school, we actually don't even have to do an annual review because your children nope. are legally considered a private school student as opposed to a homeschooled student. So they're, yes. they're two very different things. So we have, if you're in Maryland, this, this only applies to Maryland. If you're outside of Maryland, you can register in PAX Academy, which is our private school. We take um, students from all 50 states. But if you are in Maryland, you have a kind of a unique position. You can either be in our homeschool umbrella or you can register in PAX Academy as a private school student. So either one of those. Yeah. And do you want to go ahead and drop the website in there? I know, um, I think it was Heather or it was Amber had asked who to register with. Um, and so I would say definitely put in um, PAX Academy. So it's P-A-X Academy. Um, PAX Academy is Angela's private school. Uh, and actually she has recently taken on the students that used to be in my private school, which is called um, the, the Skilled Institute. And uh, my students are now under the PAX Academy private school and working with her as far as like the principal and, and all of that, but using my curriculum to support their unschooling journey. So. So with PAX Academy, we handle the transcripts and the diplomas and all the paperwork and reporting and all that stuff. So we take care of all that for you guys. Um, and then Sarah Jane gets to really help you kind of hands-on in the weeds, you know, all that real life, life learning, life experience stuff is all with her too. So yeah, between the two of us, we got you guys covered. <laughs> um, does Peaceful World Schoolers provide a curriculum? So the Peaceful World Schoolers umbrella does not provide a curriculum. It is simply the umbrella covering. You you do whatever you want to do. Um, I do provide you a list of a bunch of resources that you can use, but you're not obligated to use any of them. Um, with the PAX Academy though, we do. So we partner with Sarah Jane for our curriculum. And then I also have, um, we partner with Khan Academy as well for a lot of the other courses too. Um, and then also I have some courses as well that I have designed that are also on there as well. Um, someone asked, what is the difference between PACs and Peaceful World Schoolers? That is a great question. Um, so the Peaceful World Schoolers umbrella is a homeschool umbrella only for families that are in Maryland. And so for the families that are in Maryland, you can register in the Peaceful World Schoolers umbrella. You are legally considered a homeschool student, not a public or not a private school student. So as a homeschool student, if you're in the umbrella, um, the parents will issue the transcript and the diploma at the end of that. And you do have to have an annual review. We don't require a portfolio like the county does, but we do have to have an annual review. And then the parents would issue the diploma. When you enroll in PAX Academy, PAX Academy is a registered and accredited private school for unschoolers. And so with PAX Academy, people from any state in almost every country in the world can register and enroll in PAX Academy. And then you will be able to get your transcript and your diploma from a registered and accredited private school. It just makes that transition to college a whole lot easier because then you don't have to prove all of the things that you did. And then I help you convert your life experience into academic credits. Um, so it is, it's, yeah, it's entirely, you can pick either one. Um, they really do serve different purposes. Um, another difference as well as the cost. So the homeschool umbrella, again, because it's just, again, that covering that is hundred dollars per family per year. PAX Academy is $350 per student per year, or we actually have a family special going right now where we can do a family deal for $600 a year for up to five students. And that does include the parents. I have actually had several parents that did not get their high school diploma yet. And so the parents are actually enrolling with their kids in order to be able to get their high school diploma. And we have actually graduated a couple of parents already. So I did um, that too. That's it's so fun. <laughs> it is so yeah. fun. It is so fun. I love being yeah. able to just see parents and families empowered together to be able to pursue life and learning in the way that means the most to them. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, um, I wanted to touch on university really quick because you did mention transcripts and diplomas and all that. Um, and then I know unique has another topic or another question for you, but as far as university goes and colleges go trade schools as well, um, your students will get the, if you do PAX Academy, which is the private school, you get the same diploma as they would get from any other private school anywhere in the nation. 
whether your kids went to a boarding school or a charter school or a public school or a private school, it is the same diploma and bonus points as of three years ago, Harvard, you guys have heard of Harvard University, right? Um, Harvard actually, they actually look for home education diplomas and put them on a higher level. They look at those first because they have found that home educated students do not lose the freshman and sophomore year trying to learn how to teach themselves in the college situation and actually thrive a lot sooner and do better in their classes and don't tend to waste the money that maybe other students do coming from traditional education. I'm sorry, can you guys hear me? They're vacuuming, I'm at church. <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yes, um, that, is, that is very true. Colleges are definitely looking for people that have this kind of alternative method of learning. In particular, unschoolers, they're actively seeking out unschooled students because they are so highly intrinsically motivated. They are not relying on anyone else to, to tell them what to learn, when to learn it, how to learn it. They have spent their entire lives doing that and practicing that skill for themselves. Um, they're driven. Yes. <laughs> Unique said, if we're registered under PACS, would we still need to file with the state at to homeschool? No. So PACS Academy is a private school. Um, we went through all the hoops in order to register as a private school here in Maryland. So when you enroll in, in PACS Academy, you're legally considered a private school student, just as if you were to attend any other private school, if that makes sense. Um, and the $300 it does include resources, but like I said, we really advocate and promote this unschooling philosophy. So when you're first starting, I don't recommend that you use any curriculum at all um, when you are first starting because you really need to go through that de-schooling process. So while we do provide resources and all kinds of fun stuff for you guys and for the kids to choose, you'll see it in all of like our, our student handbook and all of the courses. I always say, do not take this course. Do not sign up for this course unless your child is the one that is choosing it. Um, and that is that is a really big piece of unschooling is is the consent of your children. We want our children to be actively choosing and taking responsibility for their own education, not just being forced and coerced to do things that have no meaning and no value for their actual life. I hope that makes sense. Sorry, I muted myself. I'm moving outside. But um, think about it this way. As an adult, if you want to learn something new, whether it's a workout or a recipe, or you want to learn a new hobby like gardening or beekeeping, you don't, you're doing it right now, right? You don't go take a college course and have someone tell you bop, 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 and give you a test on it, right? You are resourceful. You go on Pinterest, you go on YouTube, you jump on one of these videos, you, you take like a mini course that takes like a couple days or a couple hours, and then you go try it. You go practice it yourself, it doesn't work for me. And unschooling is very much more in line with the way adults learn with the freedom that we have. So when you're interested in something and when your kids are interested in something, they're going to dive all the way into it. Um, I'll use my nephew as an example. So he's 14, he's in ninth grade, he is in traditional education, and he struggled a lot in middle school because he has diabetes and he's short for his age. So he struggled socially, he struggled emotionally, he str struggled mentally, but he's an extremely bright student. So he does naturally well academically, but all the other stuff was really holding him back. He was struggling to make friends and you get it. Then he decided he wanted to play football. And we all were like, bro, you are tiny. Football's probably not a good choice, but we encouraged him to you know, do what he wanted. He's played on six different teams in the last two years. He is, has every single team gets like best heart, like most heart to, to share. He's gotten really good. His confidence has built. And now he's not watching girls dance on TikTok. He's watching football. He's watching football. He knows everybody. He knows the passes. He knows the teams. He knows the colors. He knows the, the plays. He's practicing on his own, his friends. He's surrounded himself with other people who are interested in the same things. And no one has to ask him to study football. So if, if he were unschooling and I was his parent, I would say, hey, 
you're doing great with this football thing. You're super into it. Let's do some stuff to show what you've learned so far. Like, tell me more about it, or let's write a play about football or, um, or I would love to practice some writing with you. Why don't you do a blog post about football instead of being like, do a blog post on a current event that you're most interested in? Like that ain't it, right? If they're into politics, great. If they're into science, great. If they're into STEM, great. If they're into math, great. If they're into art, great. Let them pursue those things and watch how much they actually want to learn when you don't make them do it. That is so true. <laughs> no, I truly believe like that is the biggest difference. Anytime that we try to force anyone to do anything, it's just miserable. And I tell parents this a lot because my, I had taught algebra two when I was in high school. And when I first heard about unschooling, I remember thinking like, there is no way that unschoolers are just going to pick up algebra two through osmosis. Like no one is doing this in the real life, in the real world. And I was like, how on earth are they learning, you know, algebra two without ever being taught or forced or coerced to do this? And, um, and so I actually interviewed my first year unschooling. I interviewed over a hundred different grown unschoolers and asked them that question. How did you learn the math that you needed in order to be able to go to college? And if you've been on these calls before, you've heard me talk about this. I always ask them, how long did it take you to learn all of the math that you needed from kindergarten through 12th grade and take a guess at how long it took them. Don't, don't say it. If you know, <laughs> Feel free to drop it in the comments what your guess is. How long do you think it takes an unschooler to learn 13 years of math? In a way that is actually applicable to not just know it factually, but actually can use it and put it into use in the world. Not like me, who is like, when am I ever going to use algebra? Jess took a guess at three years. Yeah, my guess was two years when I had first started this. Any other guesses? Not, that's okay. So the actual answer that they gave me was that it took them six months or less. And a couple of weeks ago, I actually talked to a girl that she had never taken a math class in her entire life, never had any formal instruction in math whatsoever. She studied for two weeks, took and path, passed a college math placement test, and she placed in sophomore math after studying for two weeks. Like, it, it's, it blows my mind. And then I see all these parents that are like struggling with their kids every day after school to like do their homework and do their math and do all this other, write this essay, do this book report. And it's just creating so much tension between the parents and the kids. And it's tension that doesn't have to be there. When we give our children the freedom to pursue the things that they love, they're going to learn well, they're going to learn efficiently, and they're going to learn with joy. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm excited to see you all, um, you know, come back to me a, a year from now and tell me about how your children and your family has been transformed by embracing educational freedom. All right, Macy, so wrote, Macy wrote, my son is obsessed with Minecraft. He's so knowledgeable about it, but I don't know what else I can do to incorporate other learning with Minecraft. Like you said, I don't want him sitting on video games all day. Okay, um, so this is something that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, it was something that was a big concern for me too when I first started with this. Um, I, and I actually had a mentor my first year unschooling, a lady who had been unschooling longer than I had been alive. And I told her very similar to this. I said, I'm really concerned. You know, my daughter just wants to be on Minecraft all day. You know, this is terrible. <laughs> um, and, and she asked me a question and she said, would you be concerned if she was reading a book about horses? And I was like, no. <laughs> and she was like, if all she wanted to do was read books about horses, would you be like upset or worried? And I was like, no, I wouldn't be because it's reading and books are awesome. And I'm a teacher and I love books. And she was like, exactly. So it's not the fact that she's spending a lot of time doing one thing. It's what you're judging, what she's doing and what she enjoys. And she was like, so rather than judge what your daughter is doing and, or how your daughter is choosing to spend her time, I invite you to play with her and look for the learning that she's doing in this game. And I had never played Minecraft before. I didn't even have it on my phone. I didn't even know what it was. I didn't know how to do it. Um, and it was Minecraft and Roblox. Those were the two big things that she loved to play. And I was like, I have no idea what is going on here. Um, and, and so I did. I, she was sitting down and I said, hey, can I play with you? And I mean, her face lit up. She was so happy. Yes, 
yes, come play with me, you know? And she was so excited that I was going to join her in this. And I sat down and I played with her and I was blown away by the learning that I could see her doing in Minecraft because I was intentionally looking for it. She mm -hmm. was like building and like geography and reading maps and talking to people and problem solving and collaboration skills and all of this other typing. Like she was typing out stuff and putting labels on things. And she was talking about genetics. She was breeding like sheep and different colored sheeps. And she was learning about genetics. I'm like, that's biology. Like she's breeding these animals. I don't know. I don't understand how she was doing it all, but it was, it was just, it was incredible. So when I started to look for the learning that she was doing as she was doing the things that she enjoyed, that helped me so much in being able to just kind of relax and be like, I don't have to incorporate learning or try to look for ways to like manipulate or control her learning because it's happening already all day, every day. I hope that makes sense. And I think too, that obviously, like, I want to say a hundred percent, that was great. I will tell that story. <laughs> I am using that as a reference. Um, and then taking that a step further, a lot of parents that, that come to me, their kids are, they're pulling them out in middle and high school. They already have a foundation of traditional education and they're looking to go to college or university to study something specific. Um, I am not an advocate for spending your money to send your kid to school so that they can party or have the college experience. If they don't know exactly what they want to do, feel called to that thing and are naturally gifted at it, they need to try it for a little bit. Um, and by maybe doing an internship at a similar thing, or that's why we've created the skilled learning platform so that they can test drive it before they, they get into that. And um, that would be something that I would say, let's encourage those older students to do say, Hey, I know you love playing your video games. Would you like to start your day with video games or end your day with video games? You're giving them that control and you're giving them that power to make their choices and say, Hey, if I only get four hours, right? Which isn't really a lot of time. I know for a fact that at least one of you on here has scrolled for two hours before and been like, where did two hours just go? And it's, and you learned nothing. Right. Um, so, so if I, if I only have four hours to, to play my video game today, they're going to be looking for things to do in that other time. And that's when you can say, Hey, let's, here are some ideas. Do you want to maybe try something? Do you want to go somewhere? Do you want to eat something? Do you want to make something? Like, are you being creative? Are you reading? Are you like, and then let them run with that. Be very general and then let them run in whatever direction. I love the example of the horse book, right? Because I'll say, hey, do you, um, do you, you're, oh, my kid never reads. My kid never reads. I'm like, cool. Do they watch TV? Yeah, they watch TV all the time. Great. Turn on the subtitles. Now they're reading. And I know that sounds crazy, but I watch TV. My husband and I watch TV with the subtitles on and I actually watch the subtitles and read it more than I'm watching the actual show. I glance up at the show and I'm reading the whole time. My yeah. nieces are three and five and, um, or six. And when my six-year-old niece started kindergarten, she knew her colors and her numbers and her letters, but she had no sight words. She knew no words. The only thing we changed when she, because my sister-in-law and I are very close and I do a lot of my stuff in their house, even though her kids go to traditional school. The only thing we changed was turning the subtitles on when she was watching TV and playing her games. And she is now in first grade reading at a fourth grade level because her it's, it's more Montessori style, right? We're backing into it from a different place. Instead of making it pressure, instead of making it right or wrong, it's happening organically the way it did for thousands of years before we had compulsory classrooms. All right. Sorry. I see someone else asked a question in the chat. This is my first year with PAX Academy. I'm confused on where to go and start with the lessons. Okay. Um, I, I can oh, say we are almost out of time. So I would recommend that you schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me and I can walk you through that. If you're confused, um, let me send actually Sarah Jane, can you also put your link for all your stuff in the chat too? So that way people can connect with you. Um, 
and, and get connected with the skilled learning platform. And I will put my link in here too. All right, our time is up for today, but if you have anything else that you would like to address privately, or maybe we didn't have time to get to it, um, you can either book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. I have a free 15 minute consultation um, or if 15 minutes is just not enough for you. I also have a full consultation as well. Um, and you can book a full consultation with me too. And let me send you the link for the full consultation. You all can find me on all platforms. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, um, TVU, if you guys are on TVU, uh, which is a Christian social media platform and they're all at legit Sarah Jane. Uh, and then if you want to check out my website, it is in the chat, but it's skilled learning app.com. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you, you, Angela. And thank you, Sarah Jane, for being here. It was so great to share the stage with you today. <laughs> I can't wait to see you in Florida very soon. I know two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good luck, everyone. You can do this. I believe in you and God created you for this purpose with your children. Give yourselves permission to de-school yourselves right now and let go of any apprehension that you have that this might not work for your kid, because this is how God designed every one of us to learn. And if they are, if you're here, it's because they're struggling in traditional education and this is your answer. So thank you, Angela, for putting this all together for all of these amazing people. My pleasure. Thank you guys for being here. And also, um, okay, so iPhone, if you could just hang out, I'm going to go ahead and let everyone else go to bed. Because, uh, well, I don't know if you're going to bed yet. I don't know what time it is where you are, but I'm going to let everyone else go. And then iPhone, sorry, I'm not sure who you are, but I will be able to help you um, once everyone else is off. All right. Talk to you all soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs>